Hi, my name is Bart Polson, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show how to use StatCrunch to uh, create correlation coefficients, a good way to analyze the relationship between two quantitative variables. Actually, it's a very flexible approach. You can even use it with um, dichotomous categorical variables or ordinal variables. If those come up, I'll show you. But first, I want to show simply how to get correlation coefficient and a correlation matrix. First thing to do, of course, is to go to statcrunch.com and to log into your account over here. Um, I'm going to use a sample data set that's already in StatCrunch. I'm going to use one that has uh, data about SAT scores. And I'm going to come over here. I went to, exp by the way, I went to explore data so I could get to the data sets that are online. I come over to browse all. And I'm going to use one that's called YMS Table 1.15. Because I used it already, it popped up as soon as I entered the first letter. And it's this one right here with a picture of the high school. So I'm going to open that up. And the data set has uh, one row for each state in the United States. With the state, the population, average SAT, verbal and math scores, the percent of students taking it, uh, with no percent of uh, people with no high school diploma, teacher pay and thousands of dollars. I can drag this one a little wider. Uh, the region of the country and percent of people over 65. Great. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at the relationship between population, verbal, math, uh, and teacher pay. So um, there's a few things. I think I do taking also. I'm going to go to statistics, to summary stats, to correlation. And what I can do there is I can pick my uh, variables. I'm going to put the SAT ones first. I'm going to put verbal and math. By the way, I'm holding down on my Apple, I'm holding down the Apple key. You, know, you would use a control key on a PC to select more than one of these. I'm going to look at population, the percent taking, and I will also look at teacher pay. So I've selected a few variables. Um, I'm going to ignore a selection statement where I say like only people over 65 or something like that, or uh, creating different charts, I'm going to ignore that. I am, however, going to go to next, where it says display two-sided p-value from significance test. This is an important thing for determining whether the correlation coefficient is reliably different from zero. So I always select that. And then I just press calculate. And here's what we've got. Let me just make this table a little larger. Okay, what I have are the variables listed uh, down the side and across the top. SAT math is here and here, population is here and there, taking is here and there, and teacher pay. Um, now this First number up top here is the uh, correlation coefficient. For two quantitative variables, its full name is the Pearson Product Moment Correlation Coefficient. Um, it, different versions of it go by different names, but they're all calculated and interpreted the same way. The correlation coefficient is a number that goes from zero, which means no linear relationship between two variables, to one, which indicates a perfect linear relationship, it can also be positive or negative, uh, although that has nothing to do with the strength of the relationship. Instead, it simply has to do with whether it's an uphill or downhill relationship. So, for instance, uh, education and income, the higher the level of education, the greater your expected income. Fine. Uh, the greater your levels of social support, the lower your levels of stress. That would be a negative association. Anyhow... Um, those are the first numbers. They, so right here, for instance, we see that SAT math and verbal have an astoundingly high correlation. It's 0.96. That's just about as high as you can possibly get. Remember, it's 0 to 1. Um, and it's positive, which we expect. This one right here is a negative uh, 305. Um, that places with larger populations have lower average uh, SAT verbal scores, strangely. Also, uh, places with lower percentages of students taking it tend to have higher verbal SAT scores, and some theories about that one. Um, anyhow, there are several other combinations here. 
The number in the parentheses is the probability value from the null hypothesis significance test. And the idea here is uh, it starts with the assumption that the correlation in the population is zero. And then if we have a correlation in our sample data that is something other than zero, that it could be due to just random fluctuation fluky chance. And this says, what is the probability of getting a correlation this big or larger through random sampling error if the true correlation is zero? And what you're looking for here is a number that is small, meaning less than 0.05. So for instance, this one right here is 0 0.0293. That's less than 05. And so we would say that that correlation is statistically significant. On the other hand, the one right next to it between population and SAT math, the, the probability value is 0 0.1817. It's greater than 05, and so we normally would not consider this statistically significant. On the other, it's pretty easy to see because the correlation coefficients vary in the opposite direction. So a bigger correlation coefficient here, the 30, has a lower p-value, the 29029, whereas the smaller correlation coefficient has a larger p-value. And you can see that pattern through the other ones. Anyhow, this is a good way to get started looking at the relationship between a bunch of variables, typically quantitative variables, but as I said, it also does work with ordinal, which means first, second, third variables, as well as dichotomous variables, and they're especially easy to interpret if they're done as zero, one variables. Anyhow, that's that uh, for now.